Hiya folks, welcome to a new week. That was a bracing weekend of news, to say the very least. And I have a lot to go through this week, it seems. So the first two videos this week will likely be on the Warhammer Fest stuff that we got over the weekend, starting today with Warhammer 40,000 and its lovely new box set. And other things that I was kind of disappointed in, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, the Patreon button is also down below, and if you really want to get some more models over the next few weeks, make sure you head over to Composite Games to enter the promo code Northern Exile at checkout to get yourself 5% off. So, a lot has been going on in the world of Warhammer, to be honest with you. Um, I, I'm gonna, I did not see... Some of the things that came out this weekend at Warhammer Fest, if you don't know Warhammer Fest, has, Warhammer Fest has been going on. It was live streamed all weekend. I did a lot of watching of it as uh, part of what I do now is that I, I have to keep up to date with these things and make sure that I know what's going on. So, um, one thing I wanted to get out of the way first, and I will get into it the, uh, later on this week, uh, the Old World stuff. I, I'm, I'm very, very, very concerned about the Old World. I do not think... That, uh, that Games Workshop are very serious about bringing the Old World out at all. Mainly because what they showed us this weekend, after so much rigmarole and so much um, getting on our faces, saying, oh, there'll be Old World stuff, there'll be Old Warhammer stuff there, we had two models. Two models. That's it. No no box set, no lore da deep dive, no artwork, no no nothing. Just, just two models. Okay, well... I, I honestly think, right, I, I'm going to get this out the way now before I jump into 40k, because 40k is where the big news is, but I didn't want to forget to say this. So, I honestly think the Games Workshop are terrified of pulling in any sort of competition money for Age of Sigmar. A, a game that is, go, is doing okay, Age of Sigmar is doing okay, but it's not 40k, and it never will be. And it's, it's not going to get to that point, at least that it's not going to get to that point if they continue pushing Old World. I think there are people at GW who genuinely regret that they ever said they were going to do Old World. I mean that sincerely. And I don't see that being a thing going forwards. But we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, moving on. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Moving on. The big news. The big news. Warhammer 40k Leviathan is the name of the new box. But what's in it? That's the main thing. What is actually in this box? Alright, so. It's here. The moment you've been waiting for. It's time to open the lid on the jam-packed launch box for the new edition of Roma 40,000 Leviathan. Okay. Let's look into it. Uh, I like the box set. I like the box art. Looks pretty cool. I do like it. Looks pretty awesome. You can see all the lovely models up here. Um, I'm not a fan of Dreadnought, but I will get into why later when, when, we, when, we, cover that, when we cover that guy. So uh, these were the two goobly goobs on there, you know, showing us all the stuff. But, you know, let's, let's skip that. Because I will be honest with you, um, Games Workshop should stop getting people from the office to do these live streams. Go and hire somebody. Uh, go and hire somebody. Go, go, go and get somebody. I don't care who it is. Go and get a celebrity. Go and get whatever. Go and get somebody who's comfortable sitting there reading an auto queue who knows about Warhammer. Listen, I swear to God, if you went to Henry Cavill and said, hey, um, if we pay for your travel and your you know, five-star accommodation for the weekend and you know, give you a load of free Warhammer, will you come and you know, do our 45-minute live stream for us? Will you, will, you, uh, will you host it for us? 45 minutes of your time, that's all. You do it. He'd definitely do it. This could we could have had Henry Cavill sitting here, doing all this stuff. You know, this this could have been Henry Cavill, but no, but no. We get two guys from the office. I mean, I, I, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But to be honest, can you imagine the hype if you got somebody of that ilk to jump in and say, "Warhammer's fucking cool, guys. Come and what? Come and do Warhammer with us. Come and do Warhammer." You know, I play Geralt, for God's sake. That's how cool I am, and I do Warhammer. Come and play Warhammer with us. If you want to make it, uh, you know, mainstream, that's what GW want to do. Go and be mainstream. Don't get two mookly mooks from the office to just wander in and start stammering over everything. You know, they've been doing this for years. Whenever they announce something big, it's always people from the office going, um, um, uh, yeah, well, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, there's a, t uh, you know, I just... Shut up. Get in your box. Anyway... 
Um, as, the, as the name suggests, Leviathan is an absolutely gigantic box packed to the brim with miniatures, books, and more. When you lift the lid, you'll find stacks of sprues containing two armies full of gorgeous new miniatures. Beneath that, you'll find the massive Leviathan book, the chapter-approved Leviathan mission deck, and a construction booklet. Okay, let's get into what these are. A deck of cards? Say it ain't so. What's in the box? 25 space, space uh, sorry, 25 space marine miniatures, okay, 47 Tyranid miniatures, exclusive 1 of 40,000 Leviathan rulebook, chapter approved Leviathan mission deck, and space marine transfer sheet. The mission deck is not something that's been in any of these box sets before, and I'm quite happy that that's in there. Um, no longer are we getting, are we not getting any dice or anything to actually play the game with in the box? So there's no, there's no measurement rules, there's no, um... No dice, no, nothing like no, nothing like that. Okay, I mean, hopefully there will be because why? Why? Why would you sell this to your parents and say, "Hey, um, here's everything you need to play the game in the box set," when everything you need to play the game is not in the box set? But I guess they've been doing that for years, where they say, "Everything you need to play the game is in this box set." Bang! They put it in front of you. Oh, really? Can I build and paint with everything that's in the box set? Um, no. You need glue, you need clippers, you need you need paintbrushes, you need paints. How much is that going to cost me? Another hundred odd pounds. Brilliant. All right. So yeah, again, they've been doing that for years. But to like not have dice in here is a bit out, a bit scandalous to me. You know, because at least if these are push fit models, these are easy to put together models. Somebody could just have have super glue lying around in their house or plastic glue lying around in their house. You know, you never know. So they could play the game straight away. It feasibly you can say that, but without dice and without rules and stuff, you, you, you can't, right? You need to go and buy a tape measure and buy some dice. Um, I don't know. It, it's just a bugbear with me. I know it's a tiny thing. It's just a bugbear with me. You, you, ignore me. Ignore me, please. Um, the miniatures... I, I, I just don't like telling lies to customers. That's all. I, and when I, when, you know, when I work for, for hobby stores, I don't like telling lies to customers. I don't like bringing this box set up, putting it in front of people, and saying, everything you need to, to play the game is in this box set. When it's not. That's what you're told to say, but it's not. It's a lie. That it, That is a lie. Barefaced, right? Hated it. So I, I wish that they would just take the, take the heat off of the staff by putting shit like that in the box. You could put dice and a tape measure in this box, no problem. No problem. And it'd be such a nice gesture. Just throw a, t throw a tape measure and a dice in there, for God's sake. It doesn't... <sighs> Never mind. Moving on, moving on. The miniatures are divided into 25 elite battle-hardened space marines, the Imperium's ultimate defenders against innumerable horrors, and a seething swarm of 47 ravenous tyranids that desire nothing more than to consume all biomass in the galaxy. Let's take a closer look at each army. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know very much about Tyranids, so when I go into the Tyranid stuff, I will be looking at them and going, Oh, yes, that's a nice model, you know? But <laughs> apart from that, I won't, won't be knowing very much about them. The Space Marines are the Emperor's Angels of Death. Man, yeah, we know that, okay. Now, this guy, I'm, I I like this guy. Any, any Space Marine with a sword is an automatic win for me. I, I like swords in 40k. I think they're, they're, they look really cool. Um, the Captain with the, with the cloak... I like his pose. I like his tactical rock. I like it's not just a tactical rock, but you can see things that are on the floor, like like a, like a smushed Tyranid bioform there, down there as well. I like it. Everything about this model I like. The only thing I don't like is that if you don't want, if you're if you're collecting anything but Ultramarines and Tyranids from this box set, right? It's quite hard to to have this guy as a part of your Imperial Fists army when they're not fighting Tyranids. Because why is a Tyranid on the base? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? It just, just rubs me the wrong way. The same thing happened with Dark Vengeance as well. Dark Vengeance had a very similar thing with, with Dark Angels in there. And they were quite obviously Dark Angels and they couldn't be anything else. That sucks. What if you don't want to collect Dark Angels? What if you want to collect Ultramarines? Or what if you want to collect Crimson Fists? I mean, why would you want to? But like, yeah, just in case. What if you wanted to collect Imperial Fists or, or, or Carcharodons or whatever? The, the, the Marines that come in a box set, the standard box set, should be nothing marines they should just be space marines they shouldn't be you should you yeah paint them up as 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 um ultramarines for the box art if you want but they should be clearly stated these are just space marines you can do whatever you want with them right you don't have to have them as tyrannic as tyrannic war veterans but this captain is obviously that unless you heavily convert the base and the base is one of the best parts about him it's a cool base 
That is a cool ass base. Oh well. I like him though. I like his pose, like everything about him. I think it's cool. I hope you can replace the helmet the, the head because why aren't you wearing a helmet, you fucking idiot? But yeah, apart from that, moving on. Alright, Librarian and Terminator armor. We've seen this guy before. Um, a lovely model, an absolutely lovely model. This is something that's been missing in, li in Librarian models for ages, and that's the fact that Librarian models for the longest time were just normal space marines with some robes. Now, we actually have these esoteric et etchings into the armor that I really, really, really like. They're almost like wards that are making sure that his power is contained within it, within his armor. His psychic hood as well is also absolutely still there and, and, and needs to be forefront in his modeling. Um, I, I like his, his axe. I like everything about him. And, by the way, you can convert this guy to be a Grey Knight because he's got a Storm Bolter attached to his wrist. And I swear to God, that's what these guys are going to be. And by the way, Look at that little piece on top of the, the, on top of it there. Does that not look like the Exorcist chapter symbol? There are going to be a few Exorcist players who are going to are looking at this guy, going, "Hmm, I think that's my chapter master. I think that's my chapter master." And you would be forgiven for for doing that as well. Uh, but and again, uh, Grey Knight players, if you're getting this box set to fill out a Space Marines army, do not paint this guy in your Space Marines chapter colours. Paint this guy in ultra, in uh, Grey Knight's colours. And watch him fly on the tabletop. Can you imagine those runic symbols bursting through silver on a grey net model? Ooh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Moving on. So the Apothecary, very, very, very nice model. I will be I will go out of my way and say this is probably low-key my favourite model from the box set so far. Um I like his pose, like he's walking forward. I like he's in Gravis armor, so he's, he's in actually you know, sustainable armor. Why would you put your apothecary in normal armor? You need this guy to harvest gene seed. He should be going around in the heaviest armor possible, behind the lines, making sure that he's getting up all of the uh, all of the guys who are already falling in combat. Lovely, lovely stuff. And again, uh, white's always good on a model if you can do it. Moving on. All right, my second favorite of of the of the models. I'm taking the, li li the librarian out of the models that are, are my favorite because it's cheating because the he's a Grey Knight model. This is a Grey Knight model. I don't care what anybody says. That's a Grey Knight model. That's not a Space Marine model. That's a Grey Knight model. Moving on. Um, Lieutenant Phobos armor. This guy looks pretty cool. Um, I like the fact that he's taking war trophies and stuff. I mean, I don't know why he's done that, but you know, he's a Space Marine. But you know, whatever. Um. Looks pretty cool. I like his pose. I, I like that he, he's in generally on his own. And he's just staggering around, you know, covered in muck and stuff. Um, I don't get what all of the hatred is towards Phobos armor. I really like Phobos armor. I like the way that it's a bit lighter. I like the way that it, it's got lots lots of uh, uh, grid patterns and, and mesh patterns in, in his midriff and, and in his arms and things like that. Um, I really, really, really like the helmets of, of Phobos, uh, Phobos armor. I think they look really, really cool. Um, I hear a lot of people saying that they're trying too hard to be a bit edgy. They're reavers. They're terror troops. And that's the one thing that I, I wish... I wish um, they wouldn't give to Ultramarines. Okay? Now, bear me out. Bear me out. Reavers... Reavers are terror troops. They should only go to chapters that are comfortable inflicting absolute horror and terror on their enemies. That means the Carcharodons, the Executioners, right? People like that. People like that. Those are the people who should be getting access to Reavers. Everybody else, you know, Marines Malevolent, right? Everybody else, if you're going to do it, it should break the law in some way. Because Ultramarines shouldn't be taking Reavers into battle. That's not what they're all about. They're not about... Again, people can say, well, you know, they're tactically flexible. Yes, but they're not dickheads. You know? There are certain things Ultramarines just won't do. There are certain things that uh, Gilliman found absolutely deplorable and distasteful, hence him hating Alpharius so much. He didn't like Alpharius because he hated the way that the Alpha Legion went to war. He thought it was cowardly. He thought it was beyond the pale of decency, beyond the rules of war, you know. There's some certain things you shouldn't do as a representative of humanity, and he didn't like the Alpha Legion. So why the hell would he have people who act like the Alpha Legion, who cause terror to their opponents behind enemy lines, in his army? It's one of the one things that he I don't think he would ever do. 
even even with him being a bit darker these days and a bit more tactically flexible, I don't think the Ultramarines and Imperial Fists and people like that would have um, Reaver units in their armies, okay? You're losing all of the edge of what the Reavers are by giving them to people like the Ultramarines because now you know the Reavers with the Ultramarines are not doing really, really, really heinous shit. The Reavers should be going in there if you need to call a human population and really bring the fear of the Emperor into them by, 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 by annihilating a, 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 a cadre of rulers from a world, you send in the Reavers of the Karkarodons and they make the messiest job of it uh, that they can. So everybody sees it. They don't quite go as far as the Night Lords by skinning them and, and hauling them up for everyone to see, but they do it in a messy fashion. They go in there, blades out, murder them all, and then they leave. As a warning to the rest of you, right? That's what the Reavers do. The Ultramarines wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Okay? I, I'd very rarely say absolutes in 40k because the law bends and breaks to suit itself all of the time. But Ultramarines would not act like Night Lords. Okay? I will say that for them. Which is a shame because I, I really like the, 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 darker, the, darker, uh, the darker chapters. But, you know, Raven Guard should have access to these guys. Like a Corridon should have access to. I'd even say Raven Guard very, very, very slightly, maybe. Maybe the more extreme factions of Raven Guard, people like that. Um, there are no real extreme factions of Ultramarines, though. They're all Ultramarines, right? I, I'm saying it, it, even even the, the uh, companies that are a bit wayward, they're not Reaver wayward, you know? Anyway, that's just me. I love the model, though. I think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, rant over about, about Fairy Boss Marines. Now, 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 now. Here is a big, big, big difference. And it's something that uh, first-born Marine players will be kind of annoyed at, I think. The Stern Guard are now becoming Primaris. So we are moving over, over to, like, like Primaris stuff now. The Stern Guard. So I can definitely, 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 definitely see you guys maybe not being too happy with things like this going on. Why? Well... It's all about devaluing a product, right? It's about devaluing of things in, in people's um, repertoires, what they want to use at any specific time. If you've already got Stern Guard, right? If you've, if you've had Stern Guard for ages and you've had these Stern Guard models that you've loved from like 7th edition and 6th edition and you've still got them now, well, tough luck. They've now been supplanted by these newer, cooler, bigger ones that make yours look a little bit cheap by comparison. I, I'm sorry, but they do. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous products. Um, I think these look amazing. Now, a few people may accuse me of, uh, you know, getting what I want and then complaining about it. That's not what I'm doing at all. These look amazing. I'm just I'm trying to stick up for the little guy here who likes his um, firstborn marines, to be honest with you. Because these are, you are literally now taking away firstborn marine units and giving them to the Primaris and saying, they're bigger and better now, why would you buy the old ones? Why would you keep the old ones, you know? Um, you know, pe people went back in the day when Primaris came out and people were saying, well, if you don't like them, stick to your normal marines, you know? Um, well, the, the problem is, is that the normal marines will never be updated and the Primaris marines simply look better, right? They do. I don't think people had a problem with the Primaris marines really coming out. I think they had a problem with the lies and the, hypo and the hypocrisy surrounding them. Um, what I mean by that is, uh, how do I put it? How do I put it? Quite simply, what I mean by that is, is, is that don't tell us that we can have our cake and eat it. That's not what this is. If you're just going to update the range of models, then that's fine. Just tell us that you're doing that and take it and run with it and say, look, this is what we're doing. We've made this business decision. We're going in this direction. Uh, you can come with us or you can stick with your normal Marines. We're not going to penalize you for staying with your normal Marines, but we are updating the, we are updating the, the, the range of, of Space Marines to make it look better, right? They didn't even need to bring the, Primar the Primaris into, into, into the factions of the thing. They could have just said, look, we're updating the, the Marines. Um, we just think it would, it would look cooler on the tabletop if they're a little bit bigger, a little bit more realistic. Um, we can get more detail into the models. We're just updating the range, that's all. Right? You would get your Xenos players saying, well, what the fuck? I do Tyranids, I do Orcs, and I've not had a new model in years. What is going Necrons, for God's sake? I've not had a new model in years. What are you doing? That would be a completely valid point, but what I'm saying is, is, is you could have done this in an honest way by saying, hey, we're just going to update the Stern Guard, the Vanguard veterans, all these other guys, um, into Primaris, uh, into the new Marines, because you know the new Marines were always the main standard, and that's what they are. And here, here we are. You know, we want we want better models. We want cooler models. Their 
business statement. Their, their, business, their business statement is literally, we want to make the best models in the world and we want to continue doing so forever. So all they're doing is following their business statement. I don't blame them for bringing out Primaris Marines, unlike, unlike others, right? I, I really don't. Like, it's all up to you. If you want to bring out Primaris Marines, good luck to you. I hope you succeed because they look really cool. But don't piss in our head and tell us it's raining, Okay. Don't bring them into the law and say, oh, they're, the, they're these wonderful things now that are that are better than what you had before, but they're not really. You can still have your own. Stop trying to please everybody all at once and just be honest with us about what your intention is. That's what I'm asking, right? And that's why I bring up with these models, because these Stern Guard look absolutely brilliant. I don't play shooter armies, and I'm still going to get me a unit of these because they look that good. So how do I think a firstborn player is going to feel looking at these and looking at his own stone guard units now? He's going to get FOMO, fear of missing out, and eventually he will cave and get the new Primaris Marines, because let's be honest, that's what Games Workshop wanted you to do in the first place. It's manipulation, and I don't appreciate it. Be honest with your intentions, be honest with what you want from us as a, as a fan base, and get on with it, okay? And enough of the fucking tactical rocks. These are normal space marines. They don't need to be standing on tactical rocks. Thank you very much. Moving on. Alright, so, so the, the poster boys. Now, now this is gonna be this is gonna be a controversial one. Alright. This is gonna be a controversial one. I don't like these. I I know. That that's gonna be con I know that's gonna be like a people are gonna go, what? Um yeah, I, I'm not a fan of these. Um Static poses. I know they're terminators. I know. They're big hulking guys who are, who are plodding along. But static poses never have been my thing. You know, we're walking slowly forwards. Never been my thing. My least favourite model ever, ever, was the Death Watch uh, Watch Captain, who's just standing there with a the halberd and not moving. He just—he's like—he's like, he's like he's standing at attention. He looks so fucking lame. It's ridiculous. Um, I have to look at that every day as well at work. You just look at it, going, "Oh, that that model sucks." <laughs> like no one ever bought it. Like, that model sucks. Who did that? Who did that? At, at the studio, who let that get out? Um, so yeah, those those kinds of models have never really been my thing. Now that doesn't mean to say that these are bad models in in their entirety. You know, they're, they're not. Like, as Terminators, they look great. Okay, they're fine. Um, I just prefer more dynamic, more graceful models than this. That's just my personal preference. But if you're into Terminators, you're gonna really enjoy these. Um, there's a reason why I love Green Knights, and that's because their their Terminator uh, units are very graceful and they look like they're moving quite a lot of the time. Or uh, you can make them look like they're moving anyway. Um, and combining them with other with other parts from other model sets, you can actually get really beautiful looking uh, Grey Knight Terminator or Paladin models. You can't really do that with Space Marine Terminators because they just are Terminators. And these guys look very static and they do exactly what it says on the tin. I don't mind, but when they start bringing out close combat Terminator squads, um, I want I don't want them to look like this. I want them to be marching forwards, going forwards at full pelt. You know, I want to be able to see the um, the momentum of them. These guys look like they're standing in a solid wall. That's not a problem. It's just not my thing. All right. Anyway, moving on. I, I hope you guys enjoy them. Great. You know, but moving on. All right, the Inferno squad. There is one model from this squad that I absolutely adore. It can only be one of two, really. Or one of three. Can you tell which one it is? If you said the middle one, you were right. Pretty obvious, I know. But those are the kind of poses that I like. Okay? Those are the kind of poses that I'm really, really into. The swaying of the motion, the drawing of, of, the, of the combat blade there. The absolute, he's looking at an enemy, he's actually doing something. He's not just standing there like, like a... See, these to me, these look like models. These are like these are like model pieces that you put on a board to represent something, right? That guy looks like a space marine. Do you know what I'm saying? I know that sounds really odd <laughs> because they're all space marines, but that guy looks like a space marine. If I was going to do a space marine model you know, in my head... Put that helmet on him, and you've got basically what that space marine is supposed to look like, right? That looks awesome. And this squad also looks awesome. I love the flamers. Um, 
I don't think we've got enough flamers in, in, in 40k right now. Please get us more. I love I love setting things on fire. These guys look brilliant. And they are, they are one of the squads who will make it into the Astral Blade simply because of their commander there. Simply because of their captain. They look really, really cool. These guys probably won't make it into the Astral Blades. I might even sell them off or give them away as a prize on the channel. Um, these guys will. Obviously, I, mean, I, 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 I just... There's a certain parts that are set that I like and there's certain parts that I don't. Um, a lot of it I will be giving away as a prize on the channel. Um, so when I, when I order a copy from Composite, I will be um, taking two or three units out of this from my own army and then the rest of it is going to be given away on a weekly basis to celebrate 10th edition. Um, I may even bring it with me to the tournament that I haven't announced yet, but there will be a tournament in the summer um, in Liverpool. Uh, to celebrate 10th edition coming out where we're all going to play combat patrol and have a really good time but there will be more details about that later on this month so um i love these and yeah they're going to be a part of the astral blades because they look really really cool especially this guy dynamic poses right looks like he's swinging it around to to really get at somebody in the front row there i love it absolutely love it all right Something that I something that I don't like again. Tactical rock looks silly, but the Ballister's dreadnought. I'm not a dreadnought fan. I don't think I'll ever be a dreadnought fan. And um, they just stand there, looking like a big block, you know. And the only one I ever liked was the Furioso dreadnought, and that was just because of its insane seventh edition rules, where it could just keep blending and blending and blending and blending. That was really really fun. Uh, the rest of it though, no, it, it, they just look silly to me. They're just these big blockhead things that just stand there and don't look very good. Um, again, controversial opinion is controversial, I know. There'll be a lot of people out there who are saying, that's sacrilege, we, we love ourselves, some, some dreadnoughts. That's all well and good, man. That's all excellent, no problem. Um, e even, even I think marine models that get to this size, even with the Nemesis Dreadknight, if you build it like it says on the tin, it just stands there looking awkward. Yeah, my Dread Knight, I pose. I pose them in a swinging motion or in a running motion or something. Something else. I've even given one robes where he's swinging it around, swinging around his sword with robes on because it looks cool, right? Um, just models are standing there like a play piece. You, this could be a centerpiece of like a of like a terrain piece or something. I just don't. I just don't like it. It's just not my thing. Um, value for box set. Yes, the value of this box set is brilliant, I mean, if you, if, depending on how much they're going to be selling it for. But I don't think it'll be sold at a reasonable price. I can almost guarantee it's going to be not that not that nice. I, I haven't seen any of the pricing yet. Um, let me just have a little look-see here if, they, if they've announced anything whilst I'm here. So, um, 40k, Leviathan, box price, yeah, box set cost. Um... The box set appears to be between £150. The cost of the box is between £150 and £245. Well, I'm going to say this now. I'm going to say this now. If it's towards the £240 mark, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Um, I'm going to save off on that as well. Have you noticed, by the way, on the right leg, what it says? Yeah, it says Kalgar. Why does it say Kalgar? Have they bitten the bullet and put Marnius Kalgar inside of a Dreadnought? Hmm. Moving on. Right, so, so the Space Marines out of the box. Okay, so the Tyranids are down here as well. And again, um, in terms of actual models, like the Winged Ty Tyranid Prime, uh, these are moving. Again, lovely flow to the models. Love it. Fantastic. You know, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna be quite honest with you guys. The 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 neuro tyrant here looks amazing. Um, I'm I'm never gonna collect tyranids. They're just not my kind of thing. If this was a necron or something like that, it'd be much more up my street or an eldar or something. Um, tyranids, um, brilliant. I'm sure all the ladies are, are loving these models. Uh, <laughs> all the all the female hive minds that we have in the hobby. Um, again, this guy though. Absolute Screamer Killer. They, they've not even tried to name him, have they? Screamer Killer. That's what he's called. Cool. Um, not sure what this thing is between his legs. I mean, that's a bit... I don't know. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Von Ryan's Leapers. Okay. Before the main higher feet force lands, vanguard organisms like Von Ryan's Leapers often embed themselves on the higher feet's target planet. These ambush hunters lie in wait, avoiding detection until they can do as much da damage as possible. They look pretty cool. I, I like this. They look a bit more dead space, these guys. I don't know if you noticed that. They do look a little bit more dead space. I like them, though. Look cool. And, and again, the termagants. So the termagants, for years, really, 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 really needed an update. And I think this is one of the main ones that, that the Tyranid players are going to are as happy with as they can be. Is that these guys have finally gotten an update because they looked awful. And I'll be honest with you. One thing that really does strike me about these guys, uh, and of course the, the other models here, is that for ages there was no fear to Tyranids. Do you know what I mean? There was absolutely no fear at all in Tyranids, because they looked ridiculous. These guys, though, that's, that's, that's cosmic horror right there. That's cosmic horror. I like that. That's cool. You can see the face down here getting melted into the sludge. I, I, I just... I mean, this is more graceful than anything else, but th but this is cosmic horror. It just looks absolutely stupendous for what we're trying to do. Lovely stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Moving on. Neurogaunts. New new factor of gaunts. The neurogaunts are a variant of strain of gaunt that share a symbiotic relationship with the parasitic uh, neurocytes that cling to their backs. Their primary purpose is to protect the powerful synapse creatures that coordinate the, t the Tyranid invasion, and they will sacrifice themselves in droves to fulfill this task. That's going to be interesting for protecting your larger creatures. They're going to be really, really cool by swarming them and things like this that you've got to get through. But also, I imagine, uh, uh, units like the flamey unit that we saw before are going to be quite good at melting these down. But anyway, moving ever onwards... I like that they are attached to the back as well. It looks pretty gnarly. Uh, barb gaunts. Oh my god. A strange fusion of gaunt, biocannon, and gang uh, gangloparasite that enslaves the two. Barb gaunts are living ordnance that shower targets with projectiles that explode into shards of serrated chitin. That is... Yeah. Again, cosmic horror. I'm liking it. We're going forward. But now we're going to get to my favourite of the bunch. My favourite of the bunch. And that is the Psychophage, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Because I'm not a big fan of spiders. And uh, if you're going to talk to me about uh, what can be more terrifying as a spider, make it more fleshy and give it more mouths. Oh, thank you. You've done so. Brilliant. Um, that is an absolutely terrifying looking creature. And the fact that also it eats Psychers as well means that uh, you know a lot of the armies that I play will be wanting to stay as far away from this guy as possible. What he does is he eats Psychers, he digests them, and then he shoots them out of that <laughs> out of his uh, out of his uh, out of his back there. At the enemy as this psycho charged ash that can melt people and things like that. It's disgusting, it's vile, it's cosmic horror, it's essentially what the Tyranids are supposed to be. A big gaping maw where just when you think your suffering is over, a whole new level begins as you're digested into the system of this thing and spewed out over all of your friends. Lovely. <laughs> so, and of course we have Roman 40,000 Leviathan is, is, weight, is a weighty tome packed with lore, rules, artwork and stunning photography of models. This book covers the core of the hobby, background information of the, for Warhammer 40,000, information about every faction, and a gorgeous showcase of beautifully painted miniatures. Okay, moving on. On top of that, you'll get the core rules from Warhammer 40,000, and the rules, as well as specially designed missions for, uh, for the new Combat Patrol game format. You'll find a full complement of Crusade rules to get your narrative campaign, campaigns up and running, ahead of Codex releases. Told you they were coming. I told you. I told you, I told you. Uh, and a full Crusade expansion that delves into the story of the Fourth Tyrannic War through a series of linked campaign games. What about the missions? There's a 66 card approved, chapter approved deck in the box, which combines the best matched play options from previous editions, which is designed to provide the best and most flexible mission experience for everybody, from the most casual players right up to the most competitive. 
On top of this, you'll also find a construction booklet to help you build your miniatures and, and a decal sheet for the Space Marine Force. So, here's the thing though, here's the thing. And now they're trying to sell you another book as well. Fair enough, no problem. Moving on. The roadmap. Now, just to finish off this video with a little bit of a more ranty nature. Those of you who told me for months that the codex was changing, that we wouldn't be getting rules and codexes anymore, it was all going to be, you know, more more con consumer-based, and it was going to be, you know, exactly what I've been saying for this entire time, and they, they've told us we're not getting codexes anymore. Read it and fucking weep, all right? Read this and weep. I told you, I told you for months that this is what was coming, and now feel the disappointment, because you deserve the disappointment because you didn't listen. You didn't listen. Instead, you, you, you heard what you wanted to hear. That's what you heard from Games Workshop. You listened to what you wanted to hear. They're never going to get rid of the Codex model. It makes them too much money. It makes them too much money. What they do is they bring out a lovely new edition of 40k. It's lovely and balanced for the first couple of months. And then eventually, bang, straight away, the first Codexes drop. They're way overpowered and the Codex creep starts. The game gets ruined by more and more and more bloat added to it as more and more codexes drop and they always need to be better than the last codexes that came out until we get to the, the final codexes of the edition which are broken as shit. Hello, uh, Leagues of Vatan when that came out where they, show, where they show you they literally don't give a shit. All they're trying to do is to get you to buy new models and just when the complaints reach a cacophony of noise they say we've learned, we've listened to you this time guys and in, and in 11th edition Trust us, everything's going to be fixed. For the first three months of the new edition, until we start the cycle all over again. Get your wallets out. Get your wallets out. It's never going to change. It's never going to change. Leviathan is just the beginning of the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. There will be a brisk pace of releases following hot on the heels of the launch set. You won't even have to wait for your codex to start playing. Well, you shouldn't have to wait for your codex to start playing. If I bought the box set... I should be able to play. Jesus. If I buy a video game, I, well, normally, but if I buy a finished video game, I don't, have, I don't have to sit here and wait for them to bring up DLC before I can play it. Unless I'm playing Mass Effect 3, of course. But then, apart from that, you know, moving on. Every single faction is getting a complete set of index cards and data cards for which for each unit that's currently available, as well as their own detachment rules, stratagems, and, and enhancements. Okay, are these free? Are these free? Are they in the are they in the rule book? These will be available to download online for free. Brilliant. From day one. Uh, while uh, they'll also become available on in the app. You'll be able to buy inexpensive physical copies at the same time. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That's half of my business plan right there. Remember what I said back in the day? What they should do? If it, it all all codexes should be premium versions. Of free stuff. Right? So all of the rules that you get should be free. They should be free. They should be online. The codexes should be affordable physical copies of those same rules with loads more shit in there. For the price. Right? But you can... All of the rules that you get in the, in the codex are exactly the same rules as the ones you get for free. Because this game isn't pay to win and we're keeping it nice and balanced going forwards. All the Codex is, is a nice commemorative thing for you, for this edition, to get and to have and to hold, with loads of, of lore, loads of background stuff, everything that's in there, it's all there, and it's all affordable. And what's more, if you are a subscriber to Warmer Plus, you should get that at a discount as well. You should be able to go into a Games Workshop with a code, a, Q, a, a QR code from your phone, to scan it and say, I am a Warmer Plus subscriber, give me my Codex for £10. Boop, done. Right? All of that shit should be in this edition, but they're not doing that. They're giving us the free rules, right? But I'm telling you now, let's say your name's Dave, right? And my name's North, and, and so we both collect Space Marines. We both love a bit of Space Marines. You like Imperial Fists, um, or you like Space Wolves, and uh, I'm not a dick, uh, so I like Blood Angels, right? So we start playing each other. And, and, and we're having fun, and we're both using our rules, our free rules that we get from our from our from our, our, our factions, right? But we're only really using the normal Space Marine rules, okay? Cool. 
I then go and I buy Codex Space Marines, and you can't afford it, so you stick with your free rules. Do you really think we're going to be on a level playing field when we play our next game? Because I'm telling you now, we won't be. We won't be. I'll have, mo I'll have access to more rules, more stratagems, more toys than you do with your free rules. That's how it's going to work out. You can play with the free rules if you want to, but you'll be putting yourself at a severe disadvantage. Get your wallet out. That's how this is going to go. And none of this is what they're telling you here. They're not going to tell you that that's the case. But it's coming. All right, for those of you who didn't listen to me about the codexes, please listen to me now. That's coming. That is coming. All right, pay to win is on its way. Is on its way. If you've got a good group of hobby friends, hold them close. And circle the wagons. And say, hey, either both players use the codexes or no players use the codexes. That's my house rule from now on. And it'll even be the house rule when we do the tournament. If you are lucky enough to be playing Tyranids or Space Marines and you and you have a codex uh, or whatever, say, say this comes before autumn, right? You can't... You, either both people use it in the tournament or, or no people use it. You know, if both players use it or none of the players in, the, in that game use it, right? That's how it needs to be from now on. Anyway, love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow. My rant is over. What do you guys think of, of everything that's been coming out over the past couple of days? It has been hectic. Absolutely hectic. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I think we're going to be doing uh, another 10th edition video tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'm going to wait and see what, I, what scripts I'm going to be able to write tonight. On Wednesday, we'll be doing more Hobby Nightmares. On Thursday, we'll be doing a, a lore video on my five favourite Space Marine chapters. And on Friday, we'll be doing some, probably some more Hobby Nightmares. Unless some more 10th edition stuff drops, then we'll be doing another video on that on Friday. And then next week... Next week, we'll be going back to our special source on um, um, Tuesday and Thursday. We'll be doing more law stuff, more writing stuff, and things like that, so you can get your teeth into that, that kind of a thing. So, love you all. Speak to you later. Have a good one. See ya.